what's your position on the severance tax issue that, that's been roaring through the UP? Is it, is it, do you support the last numbers or not support it? Well, I'll tell you what. The way I felt from day one was the locals had 100% of it. That's the way it was set up. I, I agreed with that. I figured that it was working. I thought that that worked very well. Now we're at a point where I won't have a voice on that as far as being able to vote on it. Now it's 65% 35, with the 35% of the severance tax going into a revolving loan fund. I would hope that the governor is gonna be fair because that money is coming out of the UP from these existing mines and future ones. And I hope that he takes a look at it fairly because there's only four votes from the UP and there's 106 in lower Michigan. So I'm all for economic development. I'm for helping all of the state, but I don't want these six and a quarter counties to get shortchanged in that process. So I'll make sure that that's part of the discussion. Can I ask a dumb question with the severance tax? <laughs> or what is the mining? What's the, the mining, mining tax. Because oh, okay. before, if you had an ore body in the ground, you paid taxes on that to the local immediately. They're changing that as, as the ore comes out of the ground, you're gonna be taxed on that. But one thing that it was always played in my mind was the fact that even back in the day, when people in the early or the late 1800s were developing these mines, there was major investment that went on. So if we think that we're gonna go up and keep an county and buy some property, and the three of us here are gonna open a mine to try to get a billion dollars worth of investment, have an easier time thinking that we're going to travel to the moon. So that's my point of it. I think that we need to have any new mining opportunity that comes in that's going to be safe, but I think that we're not going to be able to attract local level people to think they're going to open up a billion dollar industry. I think that that's a far fetch but I'm all for it. I mean, we've got a lot of opportunity. We have a lot of opportunity with the ore reserves up here because it's, we're in this world market. We all have a cell phone in our pocket that's gonna take a lot of these minerals that we need in there right here. But I just don't wanna see us get in a position where some of those resources don't come back out of that development for opportunity because we have a lot of people that here today that would like to start other businesses and I'd like to make sure that that money gets back to you. Here's a discussion about getting rid of the personal property tax. Um, my township doesn't get a lot of revenue from personal property. Many townships up here, that's almost half their revenue. Um, the state has looked at various formulas and they're continuing to look at this. Um, if they get rid of it, there's talk about giving those uh, units of government that are losing funds a little bit here and there. That isn't going to make it. So what's your take on it? I think that they have to research it better and come up with a plan before they get rid of their existing tax structure. It's just not going to work. Yeah, it's just, I feel that it's just a common sense approach to anything. You would like to buy another car. So you sell your car you currently have and what, you walk for two weeks? It doesn't make any sense. I don't think that they're, they're looking at this. I don't think that they're really seeing the big picture on the local level of what it's gonna do to these townships, villages, even the counties, getting this revenue sharing. Where are we gonna make up for it? Are we gonna go back to the local voters and ask them to have an increase on the millage? They'll say no. They're gonna say no. And that's why I was so dead set against Public Act 38 and the taxing of, number one, the pensions. Because that pension tax is gonna be a deterrent when you go to raise a millage. The other part of Public Act 38 that a lot of people don't realize is that our, we are losing part of our homestead exemption. So next year, when you're starting to see that you're gonna pay more on your property taxes, we're gonna have a hard time to get a tax increase for local government. So, so what's, your, what's your take on how that's gonna play out with the personal property tax? Because it's already, the Michigan municipally testified against it and it's already passed the Senate, so now it's, Something's happening today in the house. You're talking about doing it today. So, we'll, we'll I 
think that it's going to go through and then they're going to let the next group figure it out. I don't know how I can put it to you any better. That's how I see it. It's just that it's going to pass and figure it out. And the local committees are going to be the ones holding the bag trying to figure it out. And then what do we do for a reduction in local government? If we just look at the village, what are we going to, how can we even cut any more that's cut up there? Are we not going to start plowing, are we going to not eliminate snow removal on two days a week? I mean, there's only so much that we can do. You know, throughout the tax structure, it has been going down with the revenue sharing. I don't see it. I mean, I think that if it was a perfect world and you had people and business moving up here and we had about a 10% amount of houses that were for sale and you could not find a place to rent, it would make up the difference in other areas. But I don't see it happening. And I just don't think that we can rush into these changes on tax structure without consulting the local townships and villages, listening to the municipal league. 